Hello, all my dear Taurian friends. This is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer. And I have got your beautiful forecast for November uh, 2023 right here. I just want to share something with you, a couple of things that some of you have been asking me about. Yes, this is my latest book, Secrets from the Womb. This is subtitled, The Hidden Pact That Runs Your Life. Many of you have my first non-astrological book called Move Into the Magic. This is the, uh, the answer I've been looking for. Spirit wrote this book, and I'm honored to be the vehicle through which Spirit expressed itself. This book is not necessarily for everyone. If uh, you are a, um, a, a spiritual student and you've noticed that the movie that we call life keeps repeating itself, your story keeps repeating itself over and over and over, same ending, different people playing different parts, but nothing new, SSDD, and you, you just had it up to here then this book was written for you. It's a short book and it's only three steps long and it will take you step by step through um, letting go of the pact that you made and creating the kind of life that you want. Because from then on, once you do those three steps, the rest follows those three steps. I have testimonials from students and clients, and they share how their life has changed. Um, so I hope this is helpful to you. Um, something else that people have been asking me is, when are, when are you going to start another series of astrology classes um, in January? And if you're interested, go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com. Shoot me an email because I want to talk to you, find out where you're at in your astrological journey so that I can um, see if you need to start at the beginning or wait until we move along to a more advanced level. Um, and speaking of that, I am continuing my mentoring program. Um, I stopped when COVID came along for obvious reasons. Um, and now I'm resurrecting it because a lot of people want me to teach them one-on-one. -on -one. They don't want it in a group format. Um, and that's fine because we will move at your pace, um, which is really cool. You will love it. It's very enjoyable. We do uh, I welcome laughter, and I, I teach a very positive class. Um, we, the glass is not only half full, but it is almost bubbling over. So if you are interested in my mentoring program, in my, in my classes, um, or a reading. If I haven't done your your forecast for the next year, you might want that. And if you don't want to read the book, Secrets from the Womb, you can get a private session with me once again on MaxineTaylor.com. Okay. Now let's talk about your amazing forecast for November. First of all, um, Jupiter, the planet of abundance, um, Jupiter is the greatest good guy in the Zodiac, uh, greatest good guy in the sky. And it's been retrograde and it's going to stay retrograde till the last day in December. Good grief. But it is what it is. At, with Jupiter in the first house, you are jovial. You are optimistic. You uh, see the good stuff. Um, the only thing is Jupiter expands whatever it touches and that first house is your physical body. So fortunately, you've got Venus, the planet of love and beauty, in your, which is the lesser 
benefic. Jupiter and Venus are the two good guys of the zodiac. Venus is love, artistic ability, joy, happiness, money, beauty. Yeah, it's in your fifth house of fun and games. Oh my, yes. This is also the fifth house of children. Um, and by the way, our pets are our ch children also. Um, if you have a little parakeet, if you have a little dog, or a big dog, your kids, of course. So uh, Venus in the fifth says play, have a good time. However, on the eighth, it moves into your sixth house of work, health, and service. And so there's joy and happiness about your job and your health improves. Uh, you don't have to be sick with Venus there. Venus is love, and love is the universal antidote for any issue. So your job will go nicely. Your health will go nicely after the 8th of November. Now, Mercury is going into the shadow of the retrograde. Uh, when Mercury's retrograde, everything gets confused. Communication, correspondence, transportation, our mouth and our minds. They're, they don't work as a team. So uh, with when we're in the shadow of the retrograde, which we have before it goes retrograde and after it comes out of retrograde, um, it feels like Mercury is retrograde. It's not. But it feels that way. Um, you do not want to start a new project under a retrograde Mercury. That will be next month in December. We'll talk. Um, but what you want to do is tie up the loose ends of unfinished business, right? Okay. All right. So uh, on the shadow, when we're in the shadow of the retrograde, you may be thinking, okay, that's the time I'll tie up the loose ends. Well, there are so many loose ends and so much to do that we very often do not have the time to do it during the shadow. Don't start a new project when it's retrograde because it'll fizzle out or have to be redone completely during the course of the year. Now, before Mercury goes retrograde, it's in the shadow. When it comes out of retrograde, it moves into the shadow. I find that that last um, shadow is when I get those loose ends tied up, okay? Now, it feels just like a retrograde mercury when we're in the shadow. So, heads up. Look at this beautiful seventh house. That's the house of partnership, relationships, one-on-one um, <clears throat> -on -one relationships, whether personal or business. So the sun, the yellow planet, the giver of life is has been in your seventh house, creating lots of uh, energy uh, that you're channeling into your relationships primarily the one-on-one -on -one relationship. Um, on the 22nd, the sun moves into the eighth house of transformation, other people's money and secrets. And what I find is that whatever, once a year, the sun moves into the eighth house and the ego undergoes a transformation. Um, this is a wonderful time to help other people develop their financial uh, matters. Um, if you wanted to go in business with somebody, I would go ahead and talk about it, but don't start anything uh, after Mercury comes out of the shadow because you don't want it to fizzle out, okay? So anything in the eighth house will be transformed. Your ego will be transformed. This happens to everybody or should I say for everybody, once a year. Then Mercury, once again, 
the planet of communication, correspondence, and transportation. In the seventh house, you're talking to people and you're attracting people to you who talk about themselves a lot. Cool. On the 10th, Mercury moves into the eighth house and your thinking undergoes a change. You become a psychic detective at that point. Search for the answers, the hidden answers. And Mars, the red planet, wow. Wherever Mars is, is what we fight with and fight for. In your seventh house, you fight with other people and for other people. But who comes first? Other people. This is you getting out there and wanting a relationship. Maybe more than one relationship, whether personal or business. And so you're putting the other person first. And that's great because you're attracting people who put themselves first. On the 24th, Mars moved. Now, uh, it's in Scorpio by that time, of course. And what it does is it becomes very intense, very psychic. And uh, what you're going to do is ask yourself, why am I so angry? Why am I so passionate now? Um, because the eighth house is all or nothing. It is the most powerful, I think, transformational house in the whole zodiac. Okay? So, Mars is what we fight with and fight for. And so, your emotions are going to be very, very deep. And you're going to throw yourself into joint financial arrangements or transformation on a deep inner level. I love it. The new moon, which is when energy starts growing, is on November 13th. It's in your seventh house of partnership. And so this is a great time to get out there and meet people, whether for a social activity or business that's in 20 degrees 44 minutes of Scorpio okay two weeks later we've got a full moon in your second house of money and that's when money comes to a head um it's um November 27th the full moon is in four Gemini 51 and so your financial picture, your personal financial picture comes to a head. It's fabulous. Decide how much money you want. And let's get you creating that. So I love this. I think it's beautiful. So join me next month when once again, I take a look at your forecast. Until then. May the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.